We don't have an official meeting chair yet or clerk. So um, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll just call it to order at 10 past 10 or 11, 10, 10 11. And uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I've never run a meeting like in public meetings before, so I'm not quite sure what we're supposed to do next. Do we want to? Um, if yes. I may, I would suggest that you, you take open nominations for a chair, you know, take nominations as the boards and committees do. Yeah. For any position that you need to fill. Okay, so why don't we just I suggest that, are you suggesting that we put our, switch the order of our agenda and take item number two, the first part, to appoint a chair and a clerk now, and, and afterwards, when after David has spoken with us, then we can come back and talk about what that means. Can I make a suggestion that we introduce ourselves first? Yeah, that could be good too. And then go. Okay. Yep. Then do that one. Yep. So let's start. Go ahead, Karen. Um, I'm Karen Cass McBride. I am the school committee representative for this search committee. You say, what was your first I'm name? Tom I'm Leal. Okay. Normally, David, to Tom. Oh. David asked if you speak a little bit louder. Oh, so I'm can sorry. Hear. I am Karen Cast McBride. I am the school committee representative for the search committee. Nice to meet you, Karen. Nice to meet you, David. All right. I'm Thomas Leal. Most people just call me Tom. Uh, I'm just one of the members of the search committee. That is a very humble introduction. I'm sure you're more important than just a member of the committee. <laughs> My name is Tom Shatanis, uh, also just a member of the search committee. Not Thomas, just T H O M. Uh, Tom and Thomas, what do you both do professionally? Or do you just hang out at Duncan most of the day? <laughs> well, these days, because I'm retired, I. I just hang out, but uh, my background is as a software engineer, so uh, I have some, I've gained some experience with uh, interviewing people uh, in the context of building my, my own teams as a software engineer. So ho what I'm hoping is I can apply some of what I've learned over the years to uh, to this process. I hope so too, that would be great, thank you. And Tom, yeah. I didn't mean to, to interrupt, I apologize. Yeah, no problem. I was a general contractor for many years and for the last 18 years we lived and worked in Cameroon, West Africa as a wow. technical advisor to a bunch of hospitals. And while we were there, I began to question why a country like Cameroon that has so rich in resources couldn't develop so um, through a lot of research and my wife starting a school, we realized that corruption's at the heart of it. So I'm now working in several African countries starting uh, what we're calling integrity groups with uh, people in greater uh, positions of greater influence. It'll be, you might find it interesting. I've spent a lot of time, um, if you look at my LinkedIn profile, I, uh, we have a second division of the company that does a lot of international development work. And uh, I've been in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Egypt, Myanmar, Tunisia, Indonesia, Sri Lanka. Organizational development, changing the systems and processes of leading corruption. So I have a little bit of familiarity with some of the stuff you're talking about. Thanks, Tom. Yes, I'm next. I'm Guy Corbusero. Uh, I'm retired. I've uh, been uh, in town politics off and on all my life. Uh, I've been everything from the constable to selectman to board of health, uh, planning board chairman, chairman of a bunch of other boards, and I enjoy town politics. So you're really kind of new at this. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, vice mayor of Gulfview, Florida, for a while, so. We're glad to have you. Thank you, Dad. Great. I'm Cindy Landano, um, retired school administrator. So I was actually an employee of the Winston Public Schools for close to 35 years and finished out my career in a, more of a private school type sector. Um, you know, did the whole gamut. I've been involved in numerous um, hirings from 
anywhere from assistants up to superintendents. So been a part of that process. I'm hoping that some of that might help us. Um, you know, I can bring something to the table from those experiences. This is exciting. Thank you. And you said your first name was Cindy. Cindy, yes. Thank you. Yeah, good morning. My name is Doug DeLay. I'm the Finance Committee representative on this search committee, uh, which I've been doing for five or six years now. Uh, I'm also on the Capital Planning Committee in town uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, I'm a relative newcomer to the community, only 35 plus years, uh, so I'm not a local. Yeah. That's true from what I've seen. There's a lot of newcomers there, like right there in 30 years. Yeah. Uh, uh, recently, I, I also serve as chair of uh, the board of directors of a credit union in this community. And we recently completed a CEO search using an executive search firm. So there should be some parallels uh, to this type of search from that. And, and hopefully I can help a little bit in that way. <laughs> I'm Jane LaPointe. Uh, I'm a resident member of the committee. I'm also retired. I retired as a long-term uh, management consultant to organizations going through change. And that allowed me to get involved in the community. When I, I was born here, I was gone for 45 years. I moved back home 10 years ago. And um, so I'm a member of different uh, committees now. and still go to a lot of committee meetings because I care very much about what happens in this town and where it's going. And um, I think what really brought me here and what I'm very interested in is I'm also involved in a lot of things that aren't specifically town boards and committees, but they have a very significant potential to impact the town and I want to make sure that, that those things are integrated. I, you'll find I'm very big on um, trying to not work in silos, but have things that should get, to get more leverage by working together, working together. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> it's a cross between a sneeze and a tornado. <laughs> Jane and Sally, if you roll them out. Oh, yes. I remember them well. Believe me, like, one of the businesses I had, my business partner was Dick, and our associate was Sally. <laughs> yeah, I, have, I have friends who are Dick and Jane. Yeah. Yep. Is that to be good to everybody? Okay. Yes. Yes. That's it? Okay. I can't see you. Uh, okay. Your, your, your wonderful faces, but that's okay. I apologize that I was not able to be there in person today, but I will be.
I'm hoping that as we talk about this and we work and we start establishing some roles and some expectations that uh, each of you find some real enjoyment from the process. So. Okay, I think I we know. I don't want to steal anybody's, th anybody's thunder, so I'll wait for... No, that's great. Well, we have, what we need to do, Dave, is we need to pause because we haven't really... This is the first time we're meeting this committee, and as a public open meeting law committee kind of thing, we need to get, have a chair and a chair. So, yeah, Audrey, did you want to say something? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, um, the chair, I gather, I gather, has to run the meetings. <laughs> You know, you have the have the gavel call to order, do those kind of things, and the clerk takes the minutes, posts them, posts the meetings, things like that, and um, and I think what's some I'm not familiar with it all. I, I know we'll be able, an executive session for a lot of for part of what we do once we start talking about candidates, because until that's well public, their confidentiality is maintained. So that's a, there's a slightly different, I guess, part of how that all works. So, just a question: Do we also need a vice chair just in case the chair is not available? That would be a good idea, I think. Yeah. So, are we ready for nominations? I think so. All right, I nominate Jane LaPointe because she's already been doing most of the work already, <laughs> and I'll second that. Guy called a zero. You might want to think whether you want me as chair or as clerk. Oh. Are you saying that you would like to be the clerk? Well, I think I'm better, better, better suited. I mean, better suited, because I'm already taking minutes here, you see, because okay. I, I have this compulsion to take notes, well, which I just do. And the, and the reason we're having this meeting is because I did the work of a clerk in organizing right. it. So I'm just I, letting you know that. So I withdraw a, my second. Thank you. <laughs> so can I make a point of order? So just, um, so you have the right to, to su su just say no thank you. Thank you. Decline, oh, decline the nomination. Okay. Decline the nomination. All right, I'll, I'll decline the nomination. All right. I think there's probably people better suited to do that in this room. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Well, how about I'll nominate Guy since he seems to have the most experience working within this, the, or, the governmental organization that's known as Winchington. <laughs> Again, you have the right to decline. Yeah. According I, to Robert's rules, you always have to. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I will accept it unless somebody else feels that they want to mm -hmm. because I do have a good working knowledge of uh, um, of the different uh, open meeting laws and executive session. Only thing is I'm getting old and I forget a lot of things. So yeah that's it. Like Wes Woodbridge, he's next to me at planning board always telling me the words I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to take out. <laughs> So the roles and responsibilities of the chair of any board under Robert's Rules of Order are that the chair of any board is the servant of the of the board. So it is his job, his or her job to um, run the meetings, to put together the agenda, to make sure that everything is put in order, um, to make sure that the clerk or secretary or whomever um, is to um, make sure that everything is posted in the, the legal um, time frame. They are also the person that would be the spokesperson and contact with outside vendors unless they designate or the board designates an outside for another board member. Um, there's a whole plethora if you want me to go through the list. <laughs> no, no, I was, I was more just focusing on, you know, I've been a, I've been a clerk, I've been a city manager three times. I mean, I, the, the, the rules of the chair by Robert's rules is fine. Uh, I was more, more thinking, I was thinking more along the lines of what were your expectations as a committee 
of the committee chair to be able to provide you with additional information, keep everybody posted. Uh, do I send information to the community as a whole? Do I send it to the chair? I was kind of along those lines of what uh, more task-oriented type of responsibilities you might have for the I chair. Think, I think it would be good. Just more room control. We would need to set that up now. Yeah. That's what this meeting is partially about, Dave. Awesome. Okay. I think it would, okay. my, my, my sense to the committee is that it would be good when Dave has communication with us and he sent it to all of us. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that was my sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if I am elected chair, I like to go by Robert's Rules for Small Meetings, yes. which is a very casual, very open yeah. type of back and forth. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, none of this through the chair stuff. And no. You know, all that. Yeah, because what we really need for our for our chair is to call the meeting to order. Yes. Call on people to speak. Right. <laughs> you know. Um, just to pull the agenda. Yeah. You know, make any I, comments. And if I end up being the clerk, then my experience with that is collaborating with the chair to put the agenda together. Absolutely. Out there. Yeah. So I'd be glad to pass that off. I, know, I figured that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless somebody else wants to chair like Karen. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm happy to be a vice if you need a vice, but I do not want to be. I'm, I'm going through the. Got lots of vice? We've. we've yeah, been, yeah, I got lots of vice. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, any other nominations? Then I'm going to take control of that aspect of it. So we need a vote? No. Uh, all, now, since this is uh, technically not a Zoom meeting because we are all here. The only thing we have is uh, uh, the gentleman, uh, see I'm already forgetting names. Dave. 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 By the way, it's uh, Dave's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. birthday. What are you, 40? <laughs> <laughs> 53. Yes. yes, always. <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday. Okay. Uh, well, I've been nominated. All in favor of uh, Guy Corbusero's chair say aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, Pass unanimously, so I am a chair. Second item in the agenda is uh, we'll go for, uh, well, actually, I'll go for secretary uh, first, next. Clerk. Uh, clerk. Do we have a nominated clerk. clerk? Clerk. All right, I will nominate Jane for Okay. I uh, second. And second by Karen. Uh, any other nominations? Uh, not hearing any, I'll call uh, the vote. All in favor of the uh, Jane is, uh, I keep calling that secretary, yes, but, uh, clerk. clerk, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, passed unanimously. And the third item is vice chair. Uh, do we have a nomination for vice chair? I'll nominate myself. I'll second it. Okay, I'll third it. Okay, uh, Karen McBride, Karen. Don't worry about it. Karen McBride uh, is uh, for vice chair. Uh, all in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? I passed unanimously. So we have a chair, vice chair, and a clerk. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now I can't, you can leave. You can leave the gavel where I can just yeah. if I want to. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Is we going back to uh, uh, process for timing and moving forward, which probably would be Dave's uh, purview. You got the floor, Dave. Well, I think we should sing happy birthday to him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait till I, I, Okay. Yes. <laughs> You're in trouble if I'm singing. Um, do, you, do I have the ability to share, a, share the screen? Uh, let me first ask. Do you have printed materials in front of you? Yes. What you sent through? Uh, what type of printed material are you uh, talking about, uh, Dave? Like this, this noble work. Um, if you don't have that, oh, oh, oh. I can send it to you by email. I did send each of you an email oh. this morning with some things that we will, we will look at. I can put them up on the screen if somebody Are we talking about the technical uh, proposal? Yeah. Um, we don't have copies. That was sent to us electronically, but uh, we don't have copies here in front of us. Did you make notes on that? I did not. Uh, Unless we brought our own copies. Karen. 
Yeah, you're, we don't have copies of what you sent through this line. Uh, we're making them, so. No, this is something different. Oh, this is something else. Yeah. Okay. He sent this just a couple minutes before the meeting started. Oh, okay. Is that something you can print off your phone if you go up by the print? Just because that's what I do at home. It just reads. Yeah, there's no bills to be done. Yeah. I'll screen share, but I'm not sure how to do that. They're just samples. Sorry, Dave. This is just showing the views. Some of these have little expansion things on there. What's, the, what's happened, Dave, is not only we meet downstairs in a room where this is better set up, but they're revamping the technology down there today. So we're in this room, obviously, this will happen regularly. Well, there's, there's, some, there's some good news. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I just made you, I'm making you a photo so you should be able to share now. There you go. Karen, yes. is there any way to increase the volume on that? I just think that's the honor. Our phone guys don't hear that well. That's up all the way. It's up all the way? That is up on the computer all the way. Wow. Right, but is there one? That's fine. I'm going to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us can't see it because it's not. Say something, Dave. I think the sound comes off the projector. Yeah, the sound's not coming through the water. Want me to just stay a little closer to the microphone? Yes. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's our best bet. At least right now, technology. Do you guys want to move her over? She's making her own copies. Oh, great. Yeah, that's good. I sent you, I sent each of you this morning. In fact, I'll send it now. I did not send it. This is, we'll talk about this in a few minutes, the schedule. Uh, but before we talk about the schedule, I wanted to make sure that you were familiar with each of the phases. And so we'll discuss the timing on this and then adjust it according to what you desire. Um, the, let's start here. Um, the stakeholder interviews are really important when we put together a recruitment profile and I sent you a couple of samples this morning and if each of you have the, the interest if you go to municipalsolutions.org slash recruiting you'll see tons of samples of our uh, past recruitment profiles those are very comprehensive uh, they not only include information about the position which is roughly two pages uh, third page, we'll talk about the expectations, challenges, and opportunities of the position. Um, but the rest of the profile is, uh, it contains uh, economic information about the city, climate, 
uh, organizational structure of, of the town, excuse me. Um, and it contains a, a lot of information that is beyond just a standard job description. Why do we do that? Well, first of all, we've been we've been doing this a long time, and it took a lot of time to develop methodology that really attracts people to positions. And um, it's really important that we attract people that aren't looking for a new position. Just as my just it, 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 it's, uh, not just individuals that are looking for a position. About 40% of the applicants, so the people that express interest in our jobs, are, we're not looking for work. We're not looking to jump to a new position. And that's really important because, yes, we want to find people that are that are looking for a new position. But if we're, if we're fortunate in doing a national search, what it does is it helps us not only find people, and I mentioned this before, that have the qualifications, the fit, and, a, and what we're really looking for is a combination of those two, plus someone who has a compelling reason to be there. Their a parent is from there, uh, a wife is from there, They're, they grew up there. Some, some compelling reason for them to be there. It's not only going to help with the fit, but it'll also help with the longevity uh, and the continuity to make sure that you have someone that's going to be invested in the community for a long time. So the recruitment profile is very important. When we develop that, uh, identifying some of these key issues, what kind of things that a new, the new manager will face, um, some of the ch successes and challenges uh, that the city has faced or the needs or the um, things that are priorities for the city, for the select group, for the town. Um, and then, so when we meet with, we attend to, I tend to interview uh, the selectmen and as well as the committee members to get a better sense for the communities. And so when we put that profile together, it's really tailored to showcase Winship and the organization and this, uh, and this position. What I will need is some of the information may already be in an economic development document. There may be pictures of community events. Um, those are really important organi uh, organizational structure I can send a list of things that I that it would be helpful to receive, so that we don't have to go hunting for pictures of the community um, online. It's the city has some of those already organizational chart uh, pictures of community events, etc. Uh, I know that you have a a street fair. I think you guys it just you just had it recently, didn't you? No, it's the fall festival. It'll happen in October. Street through town. Well, we have fun ourselves. We have a few. Sorry. Oh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Oh, ah, yes. You're a little muted, but we can hear you if we listen hard. Okay. So, um, getting some of that additional information, having the asking the town to provide some of that, we can find. You know that information, but if the city has information that's in those profiles that they can send over, and we can pull information out of some of those those uh, documents, a pl planning documents, comprehensive plan, uh, special events, any of that kind of stuff. Just send it to us. We'll have a Dropbox. We'll put it in the Dropbox, and we'll get started working on that on that profile. I will contact. I will speak with uh, with Guy. And uh, maybe, get your, maybe get your opinions in this meeting on how best to uh, coordinate with, and I may speak with um, uh, Audrey to get a better idea of how to uh, maybe on the phone just chat with each of the select board selectmen. But the profile, we'll talk about the uh, schedule of the profile in just a, in just a few minutes. Once we have that recruitment profile done. We will publish that. We publish it not only in some national uh, locations like the International City Management Association and League of Cities, but we also have a professional network of over 20,000 public administrators. We send this to them. We get a lot of referrals from people who received it and shared it with somebody. We have a huge digital uh, media profile that we also use, and then our 
senior analyst, and this is will reach out to the development contact list of three to four hundred uh, city managers, assistant city managers, town administrators, etc., within the region. Um, and so that's important. So we can send them a direct email, personal email, inviting them to take a look at this opportunity. So it's it's very proactive. It's a dynamic recruitment. It's not static. We don't just post it somewhere and let it sit there. Uh, we're very, very actively promoting this during the time that the recruitment is over. Uh, any questions on that before I move on to the reports? Just to I, confirm, you're going to be speaking with department heads too, right? With who? Department heads, you said. It's in your RFP. Yeah, we, we plan to, and the reason why we, I say plan to is depending upon the client, sometimes they'll say depending upon the position, uh, that's, that's encouraged and sometimes it's not. Um, we may have uh, you know, 20, 25 people to talk to in this process, we're going to turn around a profile within a week and a half. That's a lot of doing. So uh, that's okay. I just want to make sure that we have, we give ourselves enough time to do that. So um, I'm, going to, I'm looking back at the committee for a minute because I actually think it's pretty important to identify at least, I think it's important to have a perspective from the department heads on this. Okay. Yes. Audrey's behind you for the hand. Oh, go well, right ahead, Audrey. Hi, David. Yeah, I'm here. Um, hi. So, what my suggestion would be, David, you know, reach out to myself, um, CC Mary on it, just so we keep everybody in the loop. And and I will. Do you want to? What works better in your experience? You reaching out to the individual select board members, or them reaching out to you? let them know that they'll be receiving some contact from me. Perfect. And I'd like to speak to them about the opportunity. That would be fine, and then they'll, they'll know that, that I'll be calling to you. Perfect. All right, so I will I'll give them a heads up that you'll be reaching out to them. Um, I have phone numbers for most of them, but I will, at minimum, you'll get an email. And then as far as the department heads, um, I, I do see the benefit in speaking with, with, with them, with the majority of them at the minimum. That'd be great. So I will reach out again through the town manager's office and let them know, let them notify the department heads again that you will be reaching out to them. So everyone on this end will have a heads up that you're going to be reaching out to them. And I'll talk to Mary uh, when we're done here today and we'll get that information out to you. I'd say tomorrow by the latest. That sounds great. Thank you. And then if you can include if you have one in order chart. So I, I want to make sure we don't miss anybody. Okay. So check it right off the list. So that, that'll come in handy later as we as we're working on profile and putting the charts. Or chart too. Thank okay. You, appreciate that. Thank you. Um, just for note, Dave, we have our IT guy here. Uh, try to set this up better so we can hear you. Sure. Just let me yes. know when I need to pause. No need to pause. We have a question from Doug for you. And yeah, that, was, that was muted right there for one thing. Okay. Uh, David, I have a question. Um, as you're explaining this process, I know there was a timeline in your proposal, but can you give us a rough idea of you know the the activity one that you just or activity two that you just went through what your target time frame is so that we've all got a picture you see that see what oh okay sorry i was staring only one uh one image my Uh, you need to lower your screen. You have a little bit of your screen. Okay, you have a menu popped up. You have a menu popped up. I'm doing that. Oh, oh. Well, that's, that's never fine. mind. That's never fine. Mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay. So, ben. so we'll, we'll talk about this here briefly because that's one of those, when, when I get a chance to understand, when I understand how many individuals I'm going to be talking to, we may need to move that August and I get back a few more days just so we give it, you know, everyone enough time to, to be able to have a conversation um, and then synthesize that into the profile. But this is a tentative that I put together this morning. So what was in the profile was based on starting July 10th. This is based on starting today. Okay. Um, and, I sent, uh, uh, and I will send this yeah. to each of you uh, so you have it when we're done. When we're done putting it together. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this is the, the place for this, but one of the things that originally concerned me, as based on my experience doing interviewing for, uh, for positions, was that it was very important to understand what the team thought was important as far as their expectations of how they would work best with the uh, with the new person, in this case, the town manager. And I think I saw something like that about uh, talking to the, uh, the current town manager as well as the current team to get their input as far as uh, the, what would be the su necessary success factors for the team to work well with the, uh, with the new town manager. Is that in there somewhere, or is that on top of um, uh, the interviews that we've already talked about? Dave, did you pick up on that? Yes, we can hear you. Um, one of the things that we're, we're looking to do, we have in this in a profile, we'll have a histor historical background, one page with some geography, how far it is to different cities. We'll have information on median income and transport and population and climate. Just some basic information that they can go to online and get pieces of this. But I like to control the message. I like to present it all in one so people don't have to go looking for it. I'd love to see a picture of the, of the select board, but if not, that's okay. I like to talk about the form of government, the structure, and then start narrowing down what the management team looks like. I think with some municipalities, it's great to talk about the budget. We talk about um, how many employees, like the department heads, how long they've been with the city. Any city administrator or town, or town manager that's coming in is going to want to know what kind of leadership team they have. So getting that information from the department heads. Um, you know, when I put put here, finance director with the city for two years, with the city for 33 years. This is very important uh, for us to be able to communicate that to potential candidates. If we have some documents like the budget, the CAFR, the strategic plan or action plan, that's helpful to there so they can go to that but then we start getting down in this case it was a recruitment for an assistant city administrator so this is where we start getting down into the roles and responsibilities of the administrator and the ideal candidate and so those things are uh, are very important that we put in there opportunities and challenges so as I talk to the department heads as I speak with the current town manager and the select board it'll be really helpful uh, when I get all that information, I'll start to synthesize it into aggregate groups. So I may hear the con uh, as I hear common themes, common concerns, common uh, concepts, or what have you. They'll they'll come together, and the, that's what this will turn into. This will turn into an aggregate of what comes from the interviews. So the candidate knows about the position. They know about challenges and opportunities they know about the structure and then we'll put a little bit of information in there about there regional go. amenities we'll probably have some things in there about sports and athletics and outdoors and um and then of course we'll have the timeline 
education on benefits and what have you. So that's a quick overview of the profile. And so I think to answer your question, I believe that was Doug that asked the question. Correct. Thank you. Um, Doug, I, I hope that answers your question. So as you know, that's that what the profile is going to look like. And yes, it will include uh, all of that feedback. It synthesizes all of the feedback from the conversation with everybody. Excuse me, Dave. I just want to note to you that we now have the owl working and we can hear you a lot better. <laughs> whoever, whoever did that, thank you. Yes, Don, Don, Don came in and did that. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? So, for the moment. For the moment, please go on, Dave. Okay. I'm going to share with you. Um, when we do the background screening process, we have a uh, report. Let me go into the folder. We will have you, the very first report you get will look like this. And it will have, so after we advertise, we close the advertisement, and then we'll put together a report. We have a checklist process, a spreadsheet, that across the top, it has everything that you've identified that we put into the profile, the, the education requirements, the public sector experience, the private sector experience, it, uh, it, you know, any any of the, the 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 ideal attributes, any licenses and certification, all of that stuff will be put into a spreadsheet, and this is what our analysts do when they're doing some pre-screening, and so when we have that report completed, we will then send you this report, and it'll list the recommended and any alternate alternates that we have. It will include how many candidates we had, men, women, bachelors, masters, doctorates, what states they came from. This is a really good summary to, to provide to, uh, to the select board. Um, at this point, we probably don't want to include the names of the individuals that expressed interest because many of them aren't quite ready for their counsels or their employers to know that they've looked they're looking somewhere else so if we can maintain that uh, up until finalists if we can maintain uh, confidentiality up until finalists have been selected and recommended uh, that would be great um, so you'll have this report and you'll be able to have all of their resumes we'll provide a background and a summary on each page but then you'll have a copy of their cover letter and the resume of each of these candidates so you'll get that you'll have time to look at it there may be 12 there may be 15 resumes there with our recommendations but then it really comes down to at that point when i provide the the report to you then i sit i step back and we have a meeting just like this where i get a chance to really listen as each of you talk about who your yeses are who your no's are who your maybes are and that's where we start to you start to funnel down and I get a chance to listen to your expectations and you'll have questions and when you go back and ask candidates for some additional information once you select those candidates that you that you want to move forward then we will do a internet social media and news background check we call it a soft background check we want to find out if there's anything in the person's background which might be problematic from a public facing standpoint uh, news as a town manager you you understand and being in local government long enough and local government uh, uh, affairs there are some that have been had stellar careers and haven't seen a lot of hiccups and then there's others that have had some hiccups or some some obstacles in their career we want to make sure we filter those out once that's done we do that in five days we will turn that around and get that back to you and have another meeting where you'll have a chance to look at that report. We call it the red report. The reason why we call it the red report is we'll have red highlighted in areas where we think that might be problematic. You'll discuss from there which ones you want to go into the, the uh, uh, 
uh, move forward as a potential finalist for uh, full criminal civil background checks, employment education verification, and uh, reference interviews. One of the things that we ask the candidates to do is we ask them to provide us a copy. We, we send them, after you select them in that first round, we'll send them a candidate introduction. We'll send them a candidate introduction and writing sample. And I'll share with you what that looks like. It'll have the candidates that we looked at, and then it will have, you'll see here report number two will have a personal disclosure statement. It will have a telephone interview. I'll conduct a telephone interview with each of the candidates. There'll be the internet news and social media research and a candidate introduction and writing sample. And here's an example of that. Excuse me, though, Dave. Those pretty well sure. mirror the Woodbury, uh, New Jersey ones you sent us already. Am I correct? I think so. I haven't. I, I don't recall exactly which ones I sent you, but it's roughly the same. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. report one, and uh, I forget what the other one's called. Uh, do you have a time frame when this will happen? Yes. Going back to this document. So there's the needs assessment and interviews. So we're planning to have everything back and ready to go uh, live by August 3rd. I, based on the potential number of people that I'd like to talk to, we might move that back a week. So um, I'll, I'll highlight this right here in yellow based on our conversation. So then we'll start posting it and, and sending it out to a variety of candidates. And then we're looking at having a closing date for that based on the start date of the, the 3rd of August, uh, closing date of the of recruitment August 27th. Again, if that moves back a week, this is probably going to move back a week. So you'll have that first report. Then we have a video conference to discuss that that first report and then you'll select uh, your first round candidate who you want to go on to the next round and then we will start internet news and social media archives uh, our, uh, news background checks and then uh, we'll get a report to you within within five or six days I guess you know, that we'll do the recruitment committee will you'll select who you want to be prospective finalist and we'll do the comprehensive background checks on so this will give you a pretty good uh, idea of each of those phases and um, things will move along pretty quickly after we get that announcement after we get that announcement out we'll probably have I estimate 40 45 uh, candidates that are interested in the position I say that with a little bit of hesitancy because we did a search for a CIO for a county in Florida that had 240 applicants. So I'm hoping at least 40 applicants, 40 interested persons, but it might be it might be significantly more than that. That would be nice. Jane has yeah. a question I for have, you. I have a question, and this is about um, how the confidentiality works. So um, if I understood this right, that first list you send that has all the candidates in there with their, with, like with the spreadsheet, there's no names attached to that. Is that correct that you said? Uh, that report will have, that report will have names, okay. one second. That report to you will have a summary at the top, then it'll have their names okay. here, and then it'll have all of their their de their details. So the question so that I would not that is that is not a public document. But if we need to share information with the, the town council and let them know the status, I recommend that we share with them 
this information up here how many total candidates men women uh applicant locations how many were, were foreign service you know military or foreign service that information is helpful yes. but to provide the names of the candidates at this point would, would, would be counterproductive no, I, I, thank you i'm raising it because I, it's the question of at what point do we have to start you know open a meeting and go into executive session because we've got this information in hand and also as we get this information as a committee how do we you know kind of the the, the reminder to ourselves that this stays confidential we can't discuss this with anyone else in the town about what what we're seeing and who, who's, who's with them, right. until the whole thing becomes public and, the, and these people don't mind having the final at the final set of candidates so I'm just putting that out there for us to know and to ask you know Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I have well, right you ahead. have anything you wanted to add to that from an administrative standpoint or legal standpoint? Um, who's he talking about? What did you say? Audrey. Audrey, did you have any additional, anything additional to add, anything to add to that? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything you know, perhaps in our process procedures, the board, it states about the proper way to handle um, executive session uh, information. It might not be a bad idea to find that verbiage somewhere and just send it to the members yes. as a reminder and as a quick outline of these are your obligations as a committee member any, for anything under executive session. Anything discussed in executive session is not to be discussed outside of executive yeah. session period just that's it open, anywhere. That's, that's open meeting law right. 101 yeah. so um and dave this is karen speaking now um i unfortunately have had a lot of experience in open meeting law um not just with the school committee but with um, the school committee down in boston which is where i moved up here from three years ago four years ago now um time flies when you're having fun in winchenden um, <laughs> So um, anything we discuss in executive session stays in executive session, including names, dates, whatever, um, until the final candidates are revealed for the town to know about. Um, I did have a question for Dave. Is there any rubric that you recommend so that we're not just all going, I like this one, I like this one, so we don't just all like different candidates and come up with um, with let's say we get 40 candidates and we all like you know several different candidates and nobody can agree on the same candidates um, I used to just so you know I used to work for the state in HR so we had a rubric for narrowing down candidates so do you utilize that process at all for that's a very that's a, that's a very good question. That rubric that we use right off the bat is the evaluation uh, metrics. Do they meet, if they're green, yellow, or red, they meet the qualifications, they appear to meet the qualifications, um, and then that's what we recommend to you. When we, when we come forward, when we have a meeting, what I normally do, and this sounds very simplistic, but we, I ask for everyone to provide a list of their yeses, their noes, and their maybes. So we'll all say, okay, everybody, who, who are your yeses? And we'll start with one person, the next person, the next person. And it's very simple. You start to see a pattern uh, of commonality. The noes, you'll start to see a pattern. And the maybes will be kind of, that's where the discussion will take place. Why did you like that person? Why did you not like that person? And that's really valuable because each of you are going to see different strengths and you're going to you're going to have questions about candidates that maybe another another member of the committee won't so it sounds uh less scientific but i think there's a lot more value in a group like this to be you know to take information from the different perspectives and then synthesize it and that's my job is to listen is to add, you know, is to, to, to pay close attention to what's being discussed and what's being said, and help bring together some decision making on that uh, on the candidates. So, other than 
this strict methodology that we look at here and give you greens, yellows, and reds, um, the rest of that is is discussion, and uh, and you will I think you'll find a lot of value in that. So it's a combination of a rubric plus um, a lot of collaboration and coming together. Hey David, uh, just want to make sure I understand it correctly. Aren't you're going to filter out unqualified candidates and only present to us? 15 or so uh, what you consider to be qualified or are you going to give us a you know uh, hundreds of re you know resumes that we're going to have to look through 12 you'll get 12 you get 12 uh, individuals that we feel are most qualified and then uh, and then um, and maybe a few a uh, few additional candidates and so you'll have you'll have this document everything that we do is fully transparent so if you need additional information whatever we have is, is yours but we'll provide you with something like this where the candidates are green there's a few that are yellow and you'll even see some in there that are just that are reds they just aren't qualified so we'll definitely give you the greens if we have 25 greens, well, we're gonna we're gonna give you the, the, the deep greens, the ones that we feel are the best, and then the additional ones. But if you say, hey, we'd like to take a look at the yellows, also, you know, if you if you if you want to do that, then by all means, we're happy to do that. So it just depends on how many candidates. You can imagine when we did at CIO one, I was literally in Austria. I took a break, I took my family to Austria, and my family was out running around doing the Sound of Music tour, and I'm in the hotel with our team trying to pare down that 240 candidates into something manageable that we could give to the clients. So, no, we're not gonna throw uh, throw this statue, it's gonna be very organized and and, uh, and uh, give you some, something to work with that's, that's, that's palatable. Thank you. Uh, we'll have a question. Okay. Yeah. Dave, this is Tom. Sure. I have a question regarding your metrics of uh, filtering candidates. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned attributes. Um, I know that you know formal education and professional experience is great, but um, successful management hinges a lot on people's philosophy of management. And I didn't know if you kind of dug into that at all. We do. That's a really good question. So in addition to the, let me pull this up find this very helpful uh, report number two in this report for these candidates you will find here we go right here we send them so you after the first meeting that we have in that first meeting you're going to say okay they, these are the eight to ten that we really like we want to move forward on and so immediately we contact them and we ask them to fill out a disclosure questionnaire then this asks have you been convicted of a felony bankruptcy you know this is stuff we need to know right up front and any social media accounts they have that's when we start to go to work on background stuff but we then I do a phone interview with each of them and we ask them for I don't like this one Second. We send them a candidate, this right here. We send them a candidate introduction. Um, that asks them a bunch of questions. How would you describe your work environment? What's the size of the organization you work for? Um, what services do you provide? What interested you in this position? But we start to get into uh, what do you believe are the keys of successfully managing a small local government? Excuse me. Uh, turn off. Um, share two examples where your leadership improved the efficiency of your local government. Share two ethical situations. So this is where we really start to drill down into um, some of the questions and concerns and issues that that came up in our conversations initially to work on the profile we also take some of those key issues and put them into this candidate introduction form so that we can get to know 
you know, have you ever worked in Massachusetts? Are you familiar with the, the form of government in Massachusetts? I mean, these are some of the questions that we want to know, and we'll take those questions and put them into this, and that'll come right at the beginning. So as soon as you net, narrow down that first group to eight to 10 that you like, we're sending this to them, and we'll get that back, and you'll have this in your report packet within five days. Have you ever experienced a situation of public outcry, angry citizens, negative media? I think this is stuff that all of you are going to want to know about these candidates way before we, we suggest them as a, as, a, as a potential finalist. So you'll have this information. It'll be their write-up. Um, what do you consider to be your greatest achievement? How do you tell us ways you've improved the cost of operations? What do you see as the major local ch challenges facing local government in the next 20 years? Uh, tell us more about your management style. Uh, and then what are your salary expectations? And, and uh, so I hope that that, who was it that asked that question? I'm sorry. Uh, Tom. Tom asked. <laughs> I hope that that addresses, I hope that, that yeah, no, that's I hope great. you like that. I hope you'll find some value there. Okay, thank you. I have a quick question, um, Dave, Karen again. Um, did you send us this one this morning? Um, I sent uh, two profile samples, and if you could take a look at those, they're PDFs, if you could take a look at those and tell me which one you like better stylistically, which one, you know, kind of works for you, that'd be great. Um, I'm like in love with uh, this one, so if you want to share this one, one. <laughs> sorry. But also the reports. I did send you two different reports so you can get an idea of what You'll, you'll be getting a sample of the kind of report that you'll be getting from us at each phase. Yeah, Dave, is this something you sent out this morning? Because yeah. I have not received anything from you. Maybe I did. Deb did, I maybe did. Jane did. I did. I did, I sent it out right before the meeting. I didn't want you to be overwhelmed with it during the meeting, but after I gave you this, this kind of, we went through this, I wanted you to have it in your inbox immediately after the meeting. So. You should have that. So you did receive, you did, did anybody else receive that? Know, yeah. it's, yeah. it's about eight megabits, and yeah, you may not go through some email server. He doesn't like me. There are four documents you sent, right, attached to it? Yeah. 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 Well, I didn't get it, Dave. 9.58 this morning. If any of you, each of you are willing, or are, 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 are more than welcome to call me directly on my mobile. So if something like that, you're expecting an email, you didn't get it, absolutely call me. Um, I get inundated with a lot of emails and it really puts priorities to the top when people call me and say, hey, can you send this right away? We can troubleshoot it, it's done. We don't have to dance around for a couple of days with the emails back and forth. Yeah, I got it. So Dave, this is Tom again. I have one other question. This is personal. Um, I'm going to sure. be traveling from August 22nd to September 8th back to Africa, a couple different countries. Um, and it looks like most of the things on the timeline are your responsibility, but the, is there a September 4th meeting? Will that be an issue or would, could there be any electronic stuff? I can't guarantee how the internet will be. The dates Let me just see here. Well, and that's, yeah. that's something that uh, the dates are going to slip a little bit. It's, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and change these now just because I think that we're going to I think we're going to want to take an extra extra week to make sure everybody is involved. Um, in in terms of uh, communication, August twenty seventh. I don't know. Thirty first. One two three. Sorry, this is work on the fly. So we're looking at having that first report, that candidate report, with all of the top candidates to you on September 4th. And then or on the 3rd, and then having a meeting on or around the 4th. We're really flexible on the time. I like to try to stick to the schedule, but if it if you need to move that a day or two, 
uh, that's okay. As, as a committee, this is your process. So we're very flexible in that. Dave, we can Dave, you may want to change that at least to September 5th, since September 4th will be Labor Day. <laughs> okay, what do we need to change that to? So I send it to you. I'll send it to you on Sunday. Monday will be Labor Day. Mm -hmm. I know it's the school committee person that realizes that, right? <laughs> but also, I'm just curious about: do we want any time to look at what you send us before yeah. we meet? Yeah. So I, I know I'm going to need more. That you know, if I get something on one day, I oftentimes I can carve out time, but I think to have a couple days, days or so to yeah. really look at it and absorb it. So we're, we're getting we're making, we're, we come to our meet our meetings fully ready. To engage, I, if, you, I if you send it out to us, uh, these are the reports. And if you remind us what your agenda is for the meeting that we're going to be having, in terms of what we should come prepared to discuss and decide, then I think that will give us a good framework for um, for reviewing it, and then we'll have a much more okay. effective meeting. And and I'm going to be normally. Normally, we would get you or send you the report on if it's something closes on Sunday. We send you the report Sunday, and then we have a meeting on 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 Monday or Tuesday. If you'd like, we can. I, I'd like to still get those reports done on Sunday. Send them to you. I don't know what dates you prefer to have those meetings. We can do a Wednesday. That'll give you two and a half to three days to review those. Is that okay? Meetings on Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and Dave, I'm going to be. This is Karen again. You're going to get to know my voice okay. really well. Sorry. Um, I'm getting. Gonna, I'm getting familiar with you. Don't sound like Tom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. And Cindy's been quiet. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be real honest. I'm in the midst of um, tomorrow. We start our interim um, superintendent search for okay. our school superintendent, and then we're going to be starting in an overall superintendent search. So, um, so I'm 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 going to be doing a balancing act here. So I am I am concurring with um, James, um, and I on June twenty, I mean July twenty first. What's today? No, twenty fourth. July, yeah, July, um, August twenty first. Sorry, I don't even know what month it is anymore. I've been doing so much school committee stuff. Um, August twenty first. Um, I will. We don't have anything scheduled that day, right? No. No. August twenty first. We will be setting out the um, schedule for school committee meetings. So anything that we can kind of figure out now for this committee would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I know I'm on much yeah. a different I know, and Jane's on even more committees than I am. So, I, I think... Mean, I think we all have life outside of this no, committee, I, right? I, yeah, and no, I, I, I... We're going to have... Yeah. We're going to have absences right. in some of these meetings, and I don't... If we wait for everyone no, to absolutely. be available for every meeting... Right. It'll be Christmas and we won't have this process complete, right. unfortunately, right. Right? right? That's just the way it is. Well, my biggest thing is if I can coordinate, since I'm the school committee rep, yeah. that, and just like you're the finance, I just want to be, I don't want to miss if I don't count. Sure. Because I'm, I'm representing the school committee. Yeah, look, I, look, I think we have to stay a little bit open until to, to life happens, you know, right. and we'll make a commitment to, with, with amongst ourselves or with Dave. To say you get us something on on a Sunday, and yes, we'd like to try to be on a Monday, on a Wednesday. Right. However, you know, right. something comes up in your life, in your family. There's there's an emergency or unusual thing of some sort, um, and then we determine if there's, if you know, depending on what the topic of the meeting is. That okay, so it's okay to have this meeting without that person there, or you know what, we're making some pretty important decisions at this next meeting. We want people there, so let's let that date flex until we can all be there. Is that? Yeah. And this whole that's schedule is tentative anyway. Right, exactly. Right. So. so I'm just putting that out there, Dave, because, you know, um, <laughs> someone someone you know is ill, dies, whatever, you know. <laughs> Don't even say that. No, well, I've had a lot of that. 
Yeah, me too. That's why I'm saying. Yeah. I, I do think, though, I would say, um, this is Cindy, Dave. I do think having like the dates, yes. at, I mean, I think that we're Even all realistic, it might yeah. be flexible, right? I yeah. certainly understand that as well. But having the dates kind of set will be helpful. I mean, I'll try the best I can to, you know, secure those dates, not plan right. things on during that time. So for all of us, I think having the dates yeah. and, you know, your um, timeline looks like, I mean, it's faster than I thought it would be, so I'm, I'm impressed by that. It seems like a process that would move along fairly quickly at the rate that would, you know, that you've introduced. So um, it's exciting. That's a that's a good thing. I mean, the sooner that we can move the process through, um, the better as well. I mean, we're a town that needs leadership, and you know, we have an interim right now, but interims are interims, and, and you know, we got a lot of things going on in the community. So I think it's a it's great that the process could move along this quickly. I was visioning it being much longer, so that's exciting. I'm excited. Yeah. If I got it, if I could have some, I just want October 10, October 11th. That should be that, that date. The question that I have here on, on this date, what, and then the reason I have this highlighted in yellow is because at some point you're going to want to have the committee, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but you may recommend, the, the question in my mind was, at what point does the committee hand off its recommendations of the finalist candidates and invite them into interview? At what point do they hand that or do they hand that off to the select board to make that decision and make that publicly known? I don't know. That's a question that I have. And so that's why I have it highlighted in yellow. It did the Board of Selectmen give you that authority to go ahead and select those candidates and we just move forward and notify the, the board or does the board have some um, I'm pretty sure final acknowledgement in a formal meeting of who the finalists are? I I'm, don't know I'm the pretty sure that we're select, and I'll defer to them in a minute, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to be selecting the candidates, the, the finalists, and making a recommendation based on those. Am I right? Oh. Yeah, Audrey here. Um, yes, typically that is what happens. The search committee, you know, regardless of the position, um, only brings to the board the final three candidates. So up until that point, the decision is all on your on you on your committee um, to make the best recommendations, and then the board of selectmen take it from there, and it's down to three. Okay, so what I have on the schedule there is on October 8th on Sunday, we'll send you that final report, the committee, the final report with the full background checks, criminal, civil, etc. That's all the stuff preceding the determination that you'll make on Wednesday, October 11th for who you want to, who you're going to recommend as your uh, candidates for interview. Um, and so I have there October 11, which is Wednesday, but I don't know how that, how that, uh, I don't, how that corresponds with a, a, a board, a, a pre-established date for the for a select board meeting. They meet on and so Monday. meaning if the board, if there's a board meeting on the 10th, and we're planning on meeting on the 11th, perhaps we meet on the 9th and then get that recommendation to the council or do we need another week for that to be posted i just don't know well, on ask, that particular piece it's like threading a needle we need to make sure that we give ourselves can, can i ask a um, question about the process you're talking about because i i would think that you get your report i mean is that report on the final three candidates or if that's re or what because if we're getting a report so in, in the previous in the previous in the previous in a, in a, you'll, you'll probably We'll probably recommend that you look at five potential finalists. Okay. As we do the criminal civil background, employment verification, reference interviews, we will there'll be there'll be at least three qualified, possibly all five. But the reason we do that is to make sure that if one of those candidates happens to drop out, you don't want to be limited to three, otherwise you end up with two. And so we like to make it a little bit a few more a couple more than that and that way you have uh the ability to say okay we like these three or we might even like these four and we might want to bring four in so 
that you asked a question and I partially answered it and I can't I can't remember the exact question that you asked. Well I, so. I, I'm just Great. curious just about here. you know I, I'm, I'm not tracking yet. Just um, for all this detailed background report, this final report from the, on the final yeah. set of candidates, uh, how many of those we're getting them on so that we have to, the time we have to spend to, to review that and to vet those candidates, and from that report, make our final recommendation of the top three candidates at the select board. That's, I, but I guess, yes. so, maybe so it's like, third. I, because we're, I'm just yeah, taking this all in now, even though I've read the report, your, your RFP, I'm just trying to follow at how this is unfolding, how it's getting more and more specific, where we're getting more and more of the information we need to make that final recommendation. And so, so, so it sounds like there's a few different reports. Yeah, I, for me, I'm very visual. I need no, to sketch each, it out. Each report, each report in each meeting, you'll narrow the candidates. Initially, the first round candidates will have 12 to 15 recommendations, 12 to 15 uh, recommended to you. You'll narrow that down to to 8 to 10. Okay. Then we'll go do the, 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 the internet, social media of those 8 to 10. And we'll bring it back to you, and then you'll say, okay, we like these six to eight but we don't like those other ones because of the problems that we've had those six to eight then we'll do the full background checks on and then depending upon maybe five maybe six and then we'll do the full uh criminal civil background check employment verification education verification and contact and speak to an interview at least four of four references in detail and then we'll provide that to you so we're providing less can the, the candidates are being narrowed yeah. down but the information on the candidates you select, we're providing you more and more depth on each yeah. of those okay. candidates. So, so by the time you get down to your finalists, okay. you will have a very comprehensive amount of information on those finalists that, that will give you everything you want to know about them. Good, Thank that, you. Ugly. And that final report you're talking about is the one we get on October 8th or whatever you call whatever date was. 11th was yeah, so the final, the finalist report, all of that stuff will be done October 8th. Thank you. And the reason, the reason why it takes a little bit longer on, uh, on the finalists is because, let me show you this. So here's what the finalist report will look like. And it shows you it has the resume, cover letter, candidate introduction writing sample, disclosure statement, the personal interview with the candidate, reference interviews, criminal civil background checks. With each of those reports, um, you'll have all of that information in the final, in the final background investigation part one, background investigation part two, and I'll show you, so there's the disclosure statement, there's the telephone interview that I have with them initially, there's their writing sample with all those questions that I showed you, and then here is their internet social media uh, information so that you can see all, and there's, some, there's a lot of times, I mean, we found a candidate that was in a bar brawl, yeah. <laughs> we find some really interesting stuff. Um, but here's what we do with our criminal investigations, uh, civil search, and this has all the different counties that they've lived, motor vehicle search, bankruptcy. We contact and interview all their, all their former employers. And so this will be a final interview, uh, sorry, a finalist report. Thank you. You won't have all this information for the earlier people in the process. You'll only have it for the finalists. Okay, thank you. Chair? Yes. If I may. I, it's Audrey again. So we're just looking at, at the dates that you have. So if I'm understanding correctly, um, October 11th, that is when this committee would meet? Well, yeah. Uh, October 8th, on Sunday, October 8th, right. is when they will be sent the finalist reports. Okay. Beyond that, it's a correlation between 
when the committee meets and when they provide the information to the select board. All right. So we look at when I'm looking at the select board meeting for October, we meet the second and fourth Mondays. The second Monday is a holiday. The ninth is Columbus Day. So I suspect this is not verified. It would have to be decided on by the board. I would suspect that we will be meeting instead of second and fourth, it will be the third and the fifth, which would be Monday, October 16th, and then October 30th. So if the report is provided to this committee on the 8th, it would give them a week to review it, make their final three to us on the 16th, or I know at one point it was discussed about having a meet and greet. Are we at that meet and greet yet with that at this point? So if we wait no. till the, not yet? Okay. Not yet. So the, the, if the committee meets on the 11th, yep. and then selects finalists, and then re recommends them to the board, the board then meets on the 16th. Okay. Then after that, uh, we, we can start on the 11th, we can start as a committee working on the interview design and coordination. What we normally recommend is a so bring them in on a Sunday. Have a uh, if there's a council meeting on Tuesday, um, we like them to be. Uh, we can do a, a interviews on Monday. This is what we normally do. We bring them in the night before of us and have a social event. Right. Uh, with community members and it's and what have you stakeholders. Then the next morning, we have drop-in coffee and donuts with uh, the employees you can come meet all the candidates and just talk. It's very informal. Yeah. Um, and then 9 to 12, we have panelists. So we'll want to have a technical panel, people that are focused on more technical questions about administration, finance, etc. We'll have um, an administrative panel, which deals more with a lot of the, the interaction with the public and... Um, um, so we can have a technical panel, administrative panel, and then take, at the same time, we have all three of them um, interactive. We have, I'm just looking to see if I have a schedule. I can provide you with a schedule that's very, um, very simple to follow. Then we'll have lunch. What, we, what I like to do is take all the candidates to lunch with the department heads. Okay. And it's interesting because a lot of our clients have said, well, that's really strange at all. I've never heard of all the candidates being together. They like it. We have so much positive feedback from the department heads getting to see all of them at the same time, just having lunch together in the afternoon. It's kind of a break. And then in the evening uh, interviews with the, with the select board. Some municipalities like to do that in a public forum. Some of them like to do it in, 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 a, in an executive session. It's entirely up to you how you decide to do that. We've even had some city councils broadcast it on their on their cable channel, and so they want to know. You know, this is fully public, um, so we can work on that interview design and coordination starting the beginning of August. Who's, who would you like to be on the committee okay. uh, on the on the interview panels, etc., okay. etc. Et so we can do that a little bit later. So. And just cor correct me, please, David. At this point, are we talking final three? Or are we talking top five or six? You know, it, 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 it's three is a magic number, but we've seen experience. We've experienced several times when the candidates were so good okay. that the 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 council or the committee said, you know what, we want to bring in four, um, and that's okay too. It just okay. really depends on. It's your search, they're your candidates, and whatever you feel is appropriate, don't, please don't think that three is the absolute, you know, universal answer to this, because it's not. You okay. may see that in this process, where there's four, and you just don't want to let any of them go. So I have another, so, thank you, thank you, and I have another question following up on that, only because I was involved in the last top manager search. So this one sounds like um, we do all this work with the reports that you provide to us, and you've had interaction with these candidates, but we don't have any. We're not going to be doing any interviewing. We're just making some recommendations to the board, to the select board, and then they or some or some interview process yet to be described, defined is going to happen. Because the experience I had before was the committee interviewed the candidates 
before as before we made our recommendations to the board mm -hmm. and then the board of selectmen interviewed them in public and, and made and made the final decision but I'm, you know I'm, not, I'm open I'm just curious as to what's am I right that we're not right now what you've been describing is we're not interviewing these people we're just doing this based on paper or not did I miss something are you asking me yes um the answer is and the most consultants would slap me in for saying this but the answer is i don't know your committee based on what i've seen is really good okay. and so there are people on the committee that have really good experience i think it would be a loss if we didn't have you involved in some of the either the te technical panel a panelist or, or a uh, administrative panel i think that would be a serious loss of value if we didn't but you may also want to include a department head like maybe the finance side is it dean is that right you know with dean's background with on the that. finance committee that could be really no, important to have him no. on a panel maybe a department head also i don't know we don't know yet what that what that those panels are going to look like but I certainly wouldn't count yourself out. I certainly think there would be some value to have some of you on those panels um, because you've been through this process the whole way, and, and so I hope that you will be. But I don't know what that what that structure is going to look like just yet. But as we get closer to that, I think each of you will have some ideas on what those panels might look like. Yeah, I, I, and I can send you a. I can send you a draft schedule so you can get an idea. Sure, that would be good. I like, I like what you're like. suggesting. I hope you would be participating. I like what you're suggesting. There's a way to do that. Uh, Audrey? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just you know, following the, the pattern here, so I think to answer your question from my perspective anyway, the answer would be yes. On the 11th, you're not going to have met any of these people. Right. Um, so you would be making your finalist recommendations, whether it's three, four, five, like without an in-person um, meeting. An option, perhaps, could be um, a Zoom meeting in executive session. That's what we. That's what we did before. So you would at least have a visual, you know, mannerisms and such like that, um, to help you make your decisions for the 11th. And then when they come in on the say 15th to the 16th. That's when you get the full face-to-face, -face, et cetera. Sit on the panels to ask for the discussions. And then, of course, you would, we would be welcoming your committee to our board meeting that night um, for any further, any final input from the search committee um, before the board takes yeah. it any further. Uh, thank you, Roger, so because I'm, I'm a little more comfortable. Maybe it'll change as we go through this process, but right now I'd be hard-pressed to say, to feel like, yeah, these are the these are what I feel of the top candidates based on what I've seen on paper. Right, and and Mr. Chair, um, I, I I concur with you. Um, having, a, you know, having worked in um, not just at the state, but I've I've worked in HR for twenty five plus years. People can look really good on paper, and yeah. having used search committees, I I mean, having used search firms before. Um, and, and I have to say that, Dave, I am in love with all your processes and your reports. I really am. Um, people can look great on paper, um, but I am a, a huge proponent of it. For me, it's going to be about the fit. Um, and I think that's, that's going to come through in interviewing them. And I think that this. Um, this committee is going to have to have a key role in at least when we get to the final few, at least having a piece in that. So I think that, you know, Audrey, you made a good, great suggestion, yeah. sure. which was great minds think alike, mm -hmm. was something that I was going to yeah. ask if we could do. Um, but even I, I thought Dave's suggestion was great, maybe even making this committee one of the technical panels, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, was a possibility, yeah. but yeah. I think before we recommend anybody as a finalist, we have to at least talk to them. Yeah, I, thank you. So, yeah. Um, I just slipped in there. So between September 13th and August 8th, there's about a three-week period where it takes time for the counties involved in the background stuff to get us their information. Sometimes it comes back quick, sometimes it doesn't. 
I think that would be a perfect opportunity in between September 8th and October, September 13th and October 8th, if we that net, that following week established, you know, set up some video interviews with the committee with those candidates. What do you think? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I found that seeing how a candidate reacts to the interactive uh, process of asking questions and answering questions. Yeah. And one of the things that I always liked was to have the candidates ask questions yes. of the, the interviewers. And, so on, on and that tells you a lot. On your yeah. point, Tom, I think that um, both for Dave and for us is to come up with the questions mm -hmm. that we want to right. ask, including right. do you have any questions right. for us. So it, it'll be, you know, either, you know, we come up with that together, we give to talk mm -hmm. to Dave, Dave suggests some for us. But so we're asking the same questions of all of the candidates yes. also is very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I call it, uh, dis I don't know if we call it committee discussions or interviews, I, doesn't, either way it doesn't matter. interviews. You call it whatever you want, Dave. Because <laughs> we all know what it is. Right. <laughs> so we also have uh, questions from the, for the interviews. We are often asked if we have a list of, of uh, sample interview questions, absolutely. Okay. We've been doing this a long time. We have a set of interview questions for technical panels, administrative panels, and for city council. And we just provide that, and you can edit that or write whatever you want. And, and at least it's a kind of a kind of a cue card if there's some things on it that you find more interesting Thank to you. discuss. So. Okay, and then we have the public comment section. Yeah. <laughs> We're kind of new at this. We've only been doing it 20 years. All right. As long as you're still learning. Mr. Chair, if I may? Yes, sir. Uh, and ju just to kind of like wrap, wrap this up. So uh, provided, you know, we have tentative dates. Um, if, in fact, these work out as we've discussed, so on the 16th, the board meeting that evening, um, the candidates are there, the search committee is there, the search committee makes their official handoff to the board, and at that point, is the search committee's job done? Or is there anything further that they will need to do? I would imagine at that point, it's done, so, yeah. you've handed it off to the board, yeah. and we say thank you very much for all your hard work, and, <laughs> and now it's on, okay, just, <laughs> um, we, I will be there for the interview process. I'd like to, uh, I'm not involved in terms of answering any questions or prompting. I just like to make sure that things are running smoothly. Okay. Most of the time I'll be out there making sure that the candidates where they need to be, uh, if, the, if the committee members or, or panelists have any questions. I do like to sit in on the interviews with the council. Um, especially since sometimes these candidates might apply for a job in the future, I want to make sure that I know these candidates are worth their salt, just like you. Um, and so, um, okay. That's okay. generally we'll set up the interviews and the process and, and then be there, be there during that process. And after all that information is taken from the technical panel, administrative panel, uh, meetings with the staff or the, the, the tours, that information is then brought forward to the board, uh, select board, and after they meet with each of the candidates, they have a debriefing and they kind of discuss. And we've always found it very useful to be there because the council or the, uh, the board will ask us questions and talk about this and talk about that. And so we're, we're there to make sure that not only when the decision is made, but then that we have and understand where the, the board is coming from when they're looking at a particular candidate to offer them a contract, part of our scope of work is to is to help with that transition to make sure that um, the count the, the board says, hey, look, we can offer this salary, this, this, this. We take that offer back to them. We ask them if there's anything that you particularly need, and we try to make that process as smooth as possible so that the person hits the ground running without any reservations at all. And sometimes. If we get all the way to that process and then we're not involved, 
something breaks down in that handoff. And so we want to make sure that that's just a smooth transition handoff and you guys are off and running. Very good. Thank you. So, so Dave, sorry, I was just going to say, so you're aware that our, that at least in the past, that our um, Board of Selectmen interviews them in public at a public meeting, correct? Yes. Okay. Just so, <laughs> so, so a question I have is one that when it gets to that interview process, and, and I, these panels sound really interesting, that's something new. What, how, what's the timing of that? How does that all work? Like these candidates show up and in one day they get interviewed by these panels and then they get interviewed by the, the Board of Selectmen. And then how does, the, how does the information from all the panels get filtered into the select board so they have that information and perspective when they're making their decision. So like when does it, when do you make your decision? On the 16th or the next next week, two weeks later after you get all the information from everyone? Uh, well, I would, Audrey here, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Thank you. Um, I would suspect that um, Mary Calandrella and Deb Dennis, our two people in the town manager's office, will be very busy. <laughs> um, Monday afternoon, gathering that information, and I would expect that by the time the board meets that night, we have that information in, in front of us. So the panels are going to happen before you. Yeah. Correct. Okay, and also oh, the panels like remote remote meetings. So no, I don't believe so. Correct me if I'm wrong, David. The candidates will physically be here. So they're going to come twice. So no, they'll they'll come on Sunday, spend the night, spend here Monday. Yeah. So when do the panels meet? The panels will meet Monday, oh, know, I a.m. See. or afternoon. Oh, okay. And then in between meetings, we put all that information together. Let me put that up on the screen for you. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. No, that's okay. <laughs> it's it's really here's, 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 here's an idea. Here's the draft right here. Okay, perfect. A little hard to read, the but that's okay. This is, yeah, from, a, this is more from another recruitment, but at least it gives you an idea. Excuse me. All right, so 8 to 8.50, coffee with staff, um, 9 to 1, technical panel, administrative panel, and in this case, drive-in drop tour. Okay, so from 9 to 1 is meeting with the panels. Um, 1 to 2.30 approximately, lunch with department heads. Um, 5 to 9.30, this is when the kind of Interviews are conducted with the Board of Selectmen. Um, and then after those um, interviews, I suspect the Board would go into executive session. Right. Yeah. We would have our conversations. Yeah. And if, if all, the, all the stars line up, we would have a decision that evening. Okay, thank from you. From executive That's session. I just, I'm sorry, I'm so, so yeah, no. particular about mm -hmm. So I'm really curious again, Dave, could you remind us of what a technical panel is? An administrative panel. If you, even even if you could, they've just send you know the definition yeah. of what. I want, panel I want, what I'm curious for. about is what it covers. Yeah. And my mind goes to what it's not covering. Okay. Yes. Can exactly. you see my screen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Technical experience. Would you hear some? Yeah. Yeah. So here's some of the the panelist questions. So it gives you an idea. Right. It talks about okay. public yes. works, uh, capital improvements, okay. uh, facilities maintenance. Uh, analyzing how well the person analyzes and, and processes information that they present to elected officials, how much they interact with external agencies. Uh, that's that's a big that's big true. issue in in uh, in New England. Yes, it is. Uh, customer service, how they how they technically how they how they gather information about the levels of service and the quality of service they're providing. <laughs> Um, capital improvements, project management, how they manage projects, yeah. um, what's the most important elements for that, decision making, dif personnel decisions, uh, leadership and change, you know, what their priorities might be for the next first six to 12 months. So these are more technical, analytical, how do you process information, yeah. how do you deal with difficult employees on a technical level. Um, the administrative panel is more about um, supervision, how they supervise, how they train and motivate, uh, interpersonal skills, how they communicate to a department directors, how they, uh, how they communicate with elected officials, 
more substantive questions about some difficult challenges that they've had, how they've worked through that. Uh, management questions such as um, innovation, um, management style. So all of those questions are, are more management focused, management style focused, leadership focused, as opposed to analytical. Okay. Does that help? People skills. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Mr. Chair. Okay. Yes, go ahead, Doug. Yeah, uh, Dave, I have a separate question uh, about compensation. And I'm a, yes. I just want to make sure that after we go through this process that we don't have candidates whose expectations are above and beyond whatever the pay scale, and I don't know what that pay scale is, I'm not, I, I don't want to be involved in that part, but I, but I just don't, you know, I don't want five finalists who are all thinking uh, that they're going to make something that we're not prepared to offer here. Wouldn't that be part of what we're putting out as a job profile, I hope? I don't know the answer. Yes. To point out. We haven't yes. given him any guidance. I've never yes. so <laughs> <laughs> has a range. I, one of the things, um, yeah. well, go right ahead because one of the things that I got thinking about looking at the contents, you know, what happens in each of these panels, I would say that... Is this guy? Of, uh, no, this is Tom. Tom Leal. Tom, okay. Tom L. Okay. Uh, one of the things I got thinking is probably I don't have a lot of expertise around the technical items, but I do have my, most of my expertise that would be transferable is more along the uh, administrative and how, you know, how does he work with the people who do the work, how does he work with the rest of the people that he has to interact with. I mean, was there something you wanted to when you, when interject? You uh, so that, you know, really, really the question comes down to, you know, uh, if the, if this committee participates in those panels, would we potentially divide our, our time based on, you know, we're, do the one where we have the expertise so that it wouldn't be all technical, everyone technical, or everyone administrative. Does that does that make some sense to you? Sure, sure. And that'll be that'll be we'll provide some insight, you know, and I, as I get to know each of you through this process, it'll be become more apparent. But mostly it'll be your decision on who you think will be the most valuable or who has the time or availability. Uh, who might be more technical, you might actually suggest another person that, on the administrative panel, you might suggest, we, let's, let's get a, a town administrator from a local, from a, from a, a neighboring community to sit on the panel. So we suggest or you may ask for a public works director. Depending upon the issues that you have, you may want to bring in or ask another person uh, that's not been involved in the process to be on, on one of those panels. So. It's really up to you. It's really up to you as you feel how can we add the most, how can you or anybody else add the most value to the process. It's your process. So I'm happy to provide some suggestions, but um, there's no hard and fast rule on this. Um, okay. There's some best practices, but it really is your process. Audrey? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the, yeah, you, David, you kind of clarified things. I, I believe, you know, with import from Municipal Solutions, the makeup of the panels would be this committee's purview. Drawing on not only this committee, but like, as you're saying, department heads, other area facilitators and administrators. Um, I would suggest also, obviously it would be your decision, um, maybe open it up to some citizens. Mm. Um, make sure that they have some qualifications behind their name okay. and such like that. But, you know, Full transparency, full disclosure, having a few citizens on some of those panels perhaps um, will, would be a, a good way to involve you know greater yeah. greater number of people than just who's in here. Well, to that point, I mean we have we have some excellent department heads here that should be involved, mm -hmm. and we probably have some newer department heads that would be good to have them involved because they have 
because they're new. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah. And they're trying to fit it in. Right. And we have we have a town that really um, we have a lot of things going on in this town that aren't specifically housed in town hall, right. Right. but they're very important that we integrate them in. And our town manager mm -hmm. has had you know a significant say or hand in whether or not the town hall is going to cooperate, continue to cooperate and coordinate. And so it's, I think to make sure we try to get some people like that in here will be important. And I think it's important. I, I was going to say that too, but I, I also think that it's time that this town starts bringing in a few people that maybe were part of the disenfranchised community. Yeah. Because, you know, part of, I think, the problem, and I'm saying this as somebody who's only been here four years, and unfortunately, it came right before COVID, so you all shut the town down when I came. Um, I knew you were coming. Yeah, I knew I was coming. Um, but, you know, um, I, I think in, you know, working with Winchenden is, is one of the things that I heard. But, you know, I, I see a lot of divide within the community, and I'd like to see that this, through this process, one of the reasons I got involved in Winchenden was to try and help bring the community together, no matter what anybody says about my name being Karen. Um, <laughs> you know, so I, I'd like to see us bring in community members that maybe they might not have the letters behind their name, and, and I don't put as much stock in a degree or anything else. I put a lot of stock in community and transparency. So, um, and, and in their experience in, in life and everything else. So I think it's it's important that we open these panels up as as much as possible to the community. So. Yes. Audrey? If I may just clarify, Karen, and I apologize if it came across that way. No, I didn't exactly I didn't in, indicate, you know, we, the cream of the cream. Open it up to the citizens as a whole. Yeah. Um, and ask them to just tell us a little bit about them, like, like we do for like we did for this committee. Yeah. And, and why would you be interested? Yeah. Um, that that was all I meant. And I wasn't critiquing you at Thank all. You. Oh, I appreciate it. that. <laughs> I just wanted to put it out there for everyone, yes. you know, yeah. just because I think that, you know, um, unfortunately, you know, what what even I didn't realize, you know, because I was looking at, demo, uh, unfortunately, census data that was older. When I when I picked Winchenden, and I picked Winchenden, I looked all over the state before buying a home here. Um, but I was looking at, at data that did not reflect what the actual, you know, real income level of, of Winchenden actually is. And we, we are a poor community. We are a school district that is in dire straits. We are, you know, and, and I don't mean that with anything that is currently going on. I'm just talking, you know, we're in turnaround status. We have things that are going on. So we're in we're in a place of flux. Good things are happening. Yep. But it's been a long time coming. You guys, you people in this room have done an amazing job. I'm a newcomer, I've done nothing. But um, you know, we need somebody that's gonna come in and stay more than a couple of years and is going to embrace everybody and work with every community member, and I really believe in that, and I want to be a part of that, of bringing that to Winchenden, and I, I, I just want to make sure that we bring, you know, as much experience to these panels as possible. So it was not at all, I was, if that came across at all, I'm sorry, Audrey, that's not at all, I know your heart's always in the right place. Thank you. So that's not at all what I meant, I just, I feel a lot that's of times fine. that we, yep. We are not hearing all the voices, mm -hmm. so no, I want to make sure we yeah, have. It's a great opportunity that we have again, and so it, and because what it sounds like, if I'm following this right, is that come sometime in August, we this committee should start thinking about panels. Yeah, because <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. we need, we'll need to do, maybe recruiting, if you will, for that. So yeah. we'll talk, we'll talk more about that to process yeah. 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 as yeah. the meetings go on. Rick, yeah, uh, Dave, this is Rick Ward. Hi. Uh, I met you a couple months ago. I think it was a couple months yep. ago. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, I'm just trying to visualize this. I believe it's October 16th day in my... <laughs> I, I, I want a visual of what it's going to be. So, a lot of activities in the morning, but from the panels, those panels will be meeting in public, right? And, uh, those panels 
Um, that's a good question. The I, I you think can have it public, or you can have it, or you can have it private, uh, and have the council meet or the, the board meeting public. Um, it just depends on your level of comfort and what you want to achieve, what you want to accomplish from those. Uh, those, uh, let me turn this off one second. I think I'm still sharing the screen. Um, it depends on what your objectives are. Um, it can be public. Usually the technical panel, administrative panel, you really want to have some deep, you know, good discussion. I, it's up to you. It's really up to it's you. It's up to the board. The board it's all up to right. in terms of how some clients have wanted to be more public, some will want to be more private, just have a yeah. public meeting at the end. I'm just uh, trying. It depends on the dynamic of the community. You know, you don't. It's, uh, you don't want to have public comment. Right. Maybe you do, but generally you don't. You want to get the most value out of. I always recommend to clients you have the opportunity to have three or four candidates, highly professional people there. And it's an opportunity to glean things from them, to pull experience from them, to pull knowledge from them. You don't get an opportunity to have, you know, three World Cup soccer players in your or in <laughs> Olympians or whatever. You're yeah. going to have some really quality candidates here. You want to make it the most productive that you can. Right. And and sometimes, if you have a, a public, you know, if you have enough for public comment, it can be a distraction. It can also become. Um, if people are on panels that don't have experience uh, with those kinds of things, it can become a distraction. It can become and reflect less professionalism. You just we want to make sure that there's this it's structured in a way that people can participate, but it's it's done in, in a professional manner so that you can get the most out of the uh, interview process. That's helpful to know. So I'm just trying again trying to figure the day. So I would assume those would probably take place in town hall, mm -hmm. probably second floor. It's the most spacious place. Mm -hmm. And so those will go during the day. The board, the committee will have already sort of interviewed the candidates around September 11th. Or whenever, yes. Whenever, you're going to have that done. So these panels, and they can be private. I don't mind that because I really don't think we want to open the public yeah, to asking questions. I, no, I that that, that could be that ugly. Part, yeah. So no public involvement on that part, other than making it available for them to see if they wanted to. I mean, it could be, you could see it on Zoom, but you don't get to, you're cut off, you can't. Yeah. Right. Well, you can have a you can have an open panel and not have public comment at right. all. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Sure. You just have to maintain. Right. Right. Yeah. It's not a, right. it's not open for discussion. Right. Yeah. So these panels, if they're available, as a select, I'm looking at it as from my selectman's point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I know I'm going to get this information from the, but if that day is a full day and I can sit there. I don't have to sit, th you know, worry about. I got to read this stuff. You're going to right. give it to me three hours from now. Right. And we're going to meet two hours. Yeah. I'd rather sit there and hear from what you, what your committee's mm -hmm. going to do. So, and then when that's all done later in the evening, we go back to our traditional. It's going to be the board of selectmen meeting. We're going to interview three candidates or four or five. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you guys want, want to bring forward. Uh, because I, I look at this committee as when you give us three names or four names, you pretty much put a stamp of approval on any one of those. You know, so whichever one the Board of Selectmen pick, we've got your backing because you gave us those three names. Yes. So we're assuming that your board isn't divided when it comes time to, you know, like right. we really didn't want that one. Two of you don't want. The, you know, I really want that to be that I'm trusting the committee to to give me either one I pick mm -hmm. is one you picked. Mm -hmm. Granted, you're probably going to recommend one out of the three. I don't know if you're doing that to us, or you're going to just say well, here are three. 
or you're going to yeah. rank, rank them and say these are our three. It's but up to them. Yeah, it's up to you. Yeah. It's up to you to do whatever. But uh, again, one of those three is fine with you. When we, I think as Dave said, all three or four candidates will be, be qualified and we hopefully will be able to recommend any one of those four and put the onus on you. Right. And then we'll do our interviews. Yeah. It could be one night, but it could not be, be depending on how many yep. and yeah. whether they're available. It might be two nights. Right. And then yeah. we'll go into executive session, come out of executive session and announce who the right. person is. So, or, or we have to do the yeah. yeah. agreement first. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I like the idea it's going Send to be Send as many fast. as you feel qualified. Right, yeah. right. Don't have, any, don't have any pity on the Board of Selectmen. <laughs> if we have a very long meeting, then we have a very yeah. long meeting. We're going to be right there with That's you. your cross to be right. It is. Yeah, I'll we'll be hold on that day. Yeah. And I'll just on that day and the next day. Right now. Does anybody have any more questions of Dave because it's going a little past noontime? Yeah. He's going to go celebrate his birthday. Uh, it's a quick question. Yeah. Okay, uh, Dave, uh, one of the things that I would like to have, and I, I don't know if it's something that can be provided, is to see the themes uh, as far as success factors divided by, okay, these are the things that the staff felt were the success factors, these are the things that uh, department heads felt were success factors. I don't know what other group, I, you're interviewing the selectmen, so that, you know, getting the themes for each group would be useful to me. And is that something that can be done? Mr. Chair, if I may? Audrey? Yeah, um, I, I think if, if I understand, if I can restate what I think yeah. you're asking is how we collate, how we pull together the feedback from each of those different segments. Is that what you're asking? Uh, I guess the question is, uh, I, I'd love to see what each group has as the themes for what they consider to be the success factors. And yeah. know that what the source was for. Sure, uh, if I may. Yeah. Um, I can understand the value of that to this mm -hmm. committee. However, I also don't want you to be influenced by our, uh, by what we want. Mm -hmm. So perhaps, Dave, you know, some high level report hmm. of your you know um, coalition of you know department head talks board of selectmen talks pick the themes okay. the, the very yes. high level themes high level that theme. we seem to focus that's, on it really and is that you know themes. what we're the areas that we're particularly focusing okay. on if yeah that makes sense yes yeah. that sounds exactly right yeah we just had a we just had a you know, recruitment for a city in uh, in uh, Iowa, and they had a lot of challenges. And so I'll just put that up there for you to see. So this is what we pulled from the meetings with the council members: opportunities and challenges. So. Each of them talked about we don't have a strategic plan, we have aging infrastructure. We, what we do is we put all that into okay. these themes, mm -hmm. and then here's your ideal candidate, so oh. that'll come. Okay. And that's, that becomes the metric by which you then, you, that we then evaluate each of the candidates. So that's we take okay. that information oh, and we put it right oh, across the top of the page, that's good. and Perfect. you're able to see which ones of these meet those qualifications and don't. Perfect, yes, thank that's you, Dave. Good. That's good. Dave, where do you see us going from here now? Yeah. Hey, you guys, this is fantastic. This is the most participation I've had in recruitment in a couple of years. I love it. I love it. So as long as, as long as you let me know when there's someone involved in the process that is the community curmudgeon, that would be good to know. Yeah. That's all of us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just, just, uh, just, of course, I'm joking. I've been well, doing this a long time. But local government, local government is not nearly as challenging as working in Iraq and Afghanistan. So I, I really enjoy it. Yes. I mean, any, any community has their challenges. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it has to uh and let you know what i think I, I the thing that i really want to compliment you on is that you're very mindful of involving the community and and uh i think it's great i think it's it can be a really fun and, 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 and enjoyable process for everybody involved in it so i'm anxious to find out how this is take shape you know we, we know our technical process but it's really all about you and so how do we make that work for you and, and um, I'm really enjoying the conversation, so thanks, everybody. Oh, thank you. Now, Dave, what do you think our next step is? I mean, are you going to meet with us again? Uh, we meet, uh, you sending information. What What do you see uh, happening? The next step is I'm going to send uh, an invitation. I'm going to cut reach out as soon as I hear from, uh, from uh, Audrey. As soon as I hear from Audrey and get the contact information, yes. I'll start reaching out and setting up interviews the next week with each of the department heads and the select members and each of you. Um, and I'm just, we're just going to be having a conversation. You know, we'll cover some of the topics that are on that profile, and um, and then the idea is that the plan is to get you back a draft profile on by August the ninth. Why did I have their July 10th? We're past that, August. So we want to. I, I'm, I'm hoping to get it before to you before then, because we need some time to review that. We need to make some edit. But our our publishing date, we want to try to publish this by the 10th. So that gives you, it gives us a couple of weeks to gather that information, synthesize it, put it into a uh, a format that you like, that's stylistic for Lynch and. And um, in the meantime, I'll be getting with Audrey and some other staff, getting some information, getting some photos, getting org charts, all that stuff. So the next step for you is um, expect a call from me, a uh, 20, 30 minute conversation, depending upon you know, how long or how short you want to talk. And then, um, and then you'll be getting a draft of the profile and as soon as that good to go and you guys are ready for that we'll, we'll send that out and get that started so. so so dave i think from from speaking as the person who will be trying to schedule meetings and get that set up um as soon as you have a clearer schedule on that and maybe once you get these uh you know who you're going to be talking to and you say okay we're going to be i'm going to be able to get the profile out to you by this date then let us know soon soon on that as soon as you can and then we can go ahead and determine amongst ourselves. So if we're going to get these on this date, then we want a couple of days or whatever to look at them individually. So we're going to meet on, on, on Y date, so to speak. And then we'll put together our agenda. We'll get the meeting posted and all that other stuff. So yeah. we're looking more around August 10th, 11th, 12th? No, no. no August 10th. He wants to have it published, here. finished from here, and back to them so they will okay. blast it to the world. On August 10th. Okay. So we have to work backwards from that. Yeah, day. that's what I'm trying to do, and I, yeah. I don't know what that is yet. Yeah. So what? What are we looking at? I that's, don't know. I that's why I'm looking for the input from Dave. Yeah. Well, if it was, if it was just, if it was just meetings with the select board, we'd have that done in a week. We'd have the profile done in a week. Right. Since we're involving more people, I don't know how many people we're talking about, but I'm saying that whatever it takes, you're going to have a draft with a few days lead time so we can get that published on the 10th. So let me let me start to organize that and uh, and take a look at that and I'll give you a little more clarity in the next few days. But this is I'm gonna go ahead and send you the, the current the current recruitment schedule and uh, so you have a copy of that. So Dave just keep in mind too when you're thinking of scheduling things with us we are required to post meetings 48 hours ahead of time, okay. and uh, both open meetings and executive session. And so, I and be, and, but, but because, and that doesn't include weekends, and our town hall is closed on Fridays, so anything on a Monday has to be posted by Thursday. 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 Every, yeah, or thir Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, Monday or Tuesday has got to be scheduled on a, on a Thursday. Thursday. So that, let me just suggest then that most of the time when we send this profile out, the draft profile, um, you're welcome to comment directly back in an email. 
And so there's a lot that we can accomplish without having to have a meeting, per se, in, in person. If you send me an email and say, hey, I really like this and this and this, could you change that? That terminology is not correct. It's it's the select board, not town board. You know, just different things like that that we need to clean up uh, okay. and fix. Um, it's easier to do, make those changes in real time as opposed to having a committee meeting formally and at that point, it's easier to do it, you know, by yeah. email, by by, yeah. by text so, message, so by Dave, phone call. Yeah, Dave. Well, I'm just sorry to interrupt you, but we um, we're not allowed to uh, make decisions in e by email. So we can do that. To you. If we would have, yeah, to but you have to do it directly to Dave. Without we can't do it in broadcast to everybody because then that right. uh, makes us uh, that, that violates. Of Violates the open right. meeting law. So if we, so the thing of it is, it's one thing if we see like little nuancey Type things yeah. that get to, anyone send that back to Dave on their own. But if there's something that we as a committee want to talk about before we meet with Dave, then we could have our own meeting. He doesn't have to yes. be here. Right. Right. So I think we're. I have a feeling we're going to move forward with a combination of meetings with Dave, mm -hmm. which is what we need his schedule for, but meetings that we're going to have right. so that we don't. So we can be efficient yeah. and effective right. in talking about right. these things. That's what yeah. I think. Yeah. But with the pub, with having the draft available on the ninth, is there actually time for the committee to talk right. about the changes that are necessary that we we feel are important and yeah, actually publish it on the tenth? No, that's what I don't. Yeah, that's yeah. What I, don't I don't think so. No, that's why the scheduling of this is really important. And I'm just, for me, okay. it's because I'm very visual and I'm going to have to look at it and see the mm -hmm. flow of it. Right. Yes. And, and for me, Mr. just Chair. just to say, oh, on, sorry, oh. no. on, August, on August 10th is, is my next, after tonight's school committee right now, Mr. is Chair. my next school committee meeting. So I will not be yeah. available at all because I will be prepping for that meeting. And August yeah. 11th is my 71st birthday, so happy I won't birthday. be available. Happy birthday. There you go. So you can work on your birthday. Dave's working on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you can work I was at the I'm school not. committee <laughs> on my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I understand hey, that. I don't, want to hear, I don't want to hear any complaints about anybody working on it. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not happy to do that. Um, so, so here's the best I can offer at this moment. I've already sent an email to the Board of Selectmen members stating, that Dave, that you will be reaching out to them and to please give it a priority. Um, I finalized my list of department heads that I want to have contacted, and there's five or six. When I get home, I will send the e same email out to them, and then by end of day today, you will have the full list of people whom we need you to speak to, and those will be department heads and Board of Selectmen uh, members. How many, uh, how many members of the select board? There's are five. There seven? Five. Five. So I will stress to them and that... Then, and then committee, committee members, we have seven, right? Yeah. No, there's five. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. yeah, seven of the search committee. What are the... Can I ask? Well, I'm just curious, the, the department heads. Well, um, that's all right. DPW, police, fire, planning, Accounting treasurer. Yeah. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. So that puts you at seven <clears throat> plus five is thirteen plus six is nineteen. He's cake. Yeah. So what? I will get that to him. I, I got. I got five five department heads, five select board members, and seven committee members. That's six department heads. Five, so we have five, six, and seven. Does he have all of your emails and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Email from yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I will get everything I need to get to you, Dave, uh, by end of day today, and then it's up to okay. you to hit the ground running tomorrow. And depending on how quickly you get back to everyone, uh, I don't. If back you to wouldn't you. mind, I'm I'm going to be out of pocket tomorrow most of the day. Okay. Um, just to have a personal issue to deal with. Um, of course. But. Um, I will try to, if you can get me some phone numbers, I'll start setting up a point to have Becky start to, so I'm sorry Becky couldn't be with us this morning. Becky's my uh, executive assistant, she's exceptional, she, she's wonderful, you'll, you'll really enjoy her. Her husband 
her husband's an F-16 pilot. They live out in Alamogordo. And uh, she, she's just, if you think I'm charming, she's 10 times as charming. <laughs> I know that's not saying much. <laughs> Tom, Tom and Tom are probably over the rolling their eyes going, this guy's not sure. Well, thank you, Tom. Dave. Yes, thank, thank you Dave. very much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you for your time on your birthday. Happy birthday. And stay cool. Thank I hear it's going to be mid 113, 115 where you are today. So. Oh. Hey, it's that, that, that's, uh, you know, that's not including the wind chill. <laughs> there you go. A positive attitude. Love it. Exactly. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Dave. Thank you. Okay. Audrey, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, if you have not received from Wendy Stevens, the town clerk, the open meeting law, um, document that you have to go through, please stop down and see here because you will need to do that as part of this committee. You, you, you all receive yeah. everything? Yeah. All right, perfect. Perfect. Many times. Lines? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all, we all yeah. should have that. Actually, online's a lot of fun. I sit there and I do it just for fun when the crappy TV's on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> just want to make sure. Thank you. So I guess... Okay. Yes, next item is... When do we want to meet again? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to say. I'm not quite sure. I can't uh, follow yeah. what's happening. It's to be determined, okay. right? Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I think no. so. Why Until he gets us back that document. Yes. Why, does it, why don't we see what he sends us as a timeline right. and updates this and gets through his, mm -hmm. his interviews? And then, you know, um, yeah. because, I mean, if... Between Jane and, and I, we can call the meeting. Yeah. yeah. And, and we'll email you guys about your availability and stuff like that. And I'm just curious, am, am I accurate or not? And I don't mind being wrong on things. That um, if if that we prefer to have time to meet as a committee together, he doesn't have to be here for us to right. review. Right. Yeah. Right. Of course. Yeah. Okay. That's what I, that's what I just wanted to check in on. That. Yeah. Uh, review the especially the minutes that you produce. Have a meeting so we can go over those again and let it sink in. Because a lot, of, I gotta say, I missed a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure I captured it all, but well, it's here. And um, but yeah, because every meeting we'll have to approve minutes anyway. Right. Yeah. And then um, yeah, and then I don't know what to do with them for a while. Because the executive committee ones don't get posted. And we'll figure not it out. until we release. Yeah. So we'll figure that part out. Just going through. Yeah, no, I so we'll, we'll still have to approve them. Approve them when yeah. they are released. Oh. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, suggestion. very good. Um, with, with some of the uncertainty, I know August 10th seems like it's a long ways away, it's but it's really it's only it's very close. two and a half weeks, yeah. no. approximately. Yeah, it's to um, back and in order to hit the the 48 hour, yeah. um, it's it's not ideal, but perhaps post a meeting like for next Tuesday or Wednesday. That's the way it's posted. If you have something to discuss, cancel. you're already posted. Yeah. If there's nothing, you can just, you know, cancel, cancel the meeting. Yeah. Okay, so what, what when you say next Tuesday or Wednesday, what date are you talking about? Um, yeah, I think we're going to start Yeah. Always easy to cancel. So it's so more difficult August to get on the July account. 31st or August 1st, right? Are we from no. today? August 1st is Tuesday. August 1st is Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, or just whatever day works best for you. If, if Monday at this time works. Well, I mean, if he's works, not going to have the draft for us. But you, we don't know that. Well, he just said that he's setting up the meetings for next week. Yeah. So he's not oh, going to have. That. Yeah. yeah, no, he's yeah. not going to have anything for us next week. The draft right. is going to be August 8th or 9th. Right. Exactly. Is what he said. Yeah, but uh, we're not meaning to go over his stuff. We're meaning just to go over what we did today and well, discuss our future. Okay. Well, we can uh, improve minutes at the same meeting. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was going to be. Well, cause I'm gonna but say, if you want to wait till then, it's fine with me. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd rather. Yeah, I'd rather. I'll get the minutes out to you sooner. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, yeah, we can. I got a lot going on, but when right. I get them done, I send yeah. them out. And if I miss something or think needs to be corrected, just tell me. Um, but I think that for our next meeting, this is what we're going to have to find a rhythm with him, right? Because 
his schedule might not fit with how we choose to work. So it's kind of like, well, I'm going to get this to you on a Sunday the 8th. So if he, so if he can commit to that, then that means what we're going to be doing, if I get to August again, is, no, that's Sunday yeah, the 8th. That's October. No. That's when he was talking about the final. Yes. Okay, October. so whatever date uh, uh, he's going to get these to us, maybe it's the 6th. If it's right. the 6th, then we can meet, if we anticipate that, we can meet on the 7th, 8th, or 9th, let's say. Yeah. Right. The 7th and 8th, or 8th, and then we meet with him on the 9th. That's a Wednesday. That's a Sunday to Wednesday mm -hmm. that we talked about. Um, my, my, my two cents for what it's worth, um, plan my meeting on the 7th, tell David, this is when we have our first get, uh, next meeting scheduled, ideally we would want the draft by the 7th, because that way you would have the 8th, well, we'd want it before you can talk about it the 7th, we'd want it by the ideally, yes. It means that the 7th is the only day I am away in the entire no, month of August. But, not, <laughs> but here's what I want to suggest. He keeps referencing Sundays as the day they get out their reports. So there's something in their schedule. Right. Uh, we will get things okay. from him on Sundays. That's what it sounds like. Right. So we want our Mondays to go through this at least. Monday. So okay. what we would try to do is meet on the 8th. I mean, not yeah. Tuesday. Well, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. And then get back any revisions to him. They would have the 9th to make the revisions. Yeah. And then they can do whatever to hit the uh, release on the channel. So, well, if we, if we might do that, I'd like to ask what times we for work for people on the 8th. Do you, you know that? Yeah, right now, I am completely open on the 8th. I'm not. That's why I'm asking. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's your time? I put, well, there's um, because of the things I'm involved in, there is a community partner breakfast for the CAC, the Master Plan Implementation Committee in HEAL, that I kind of have to go to. That's a 10. And then I could try to shift this, but right now I'm, I'm a library trustee and I help with programs, and I'm helping with a program at 10, at 2.30 in the afternoon. So are you talking evening? Evenings are better for me. Yeah. Or, or late afternoon. Yeah, late afternoon would work. Late afternoon works better yeah. for me than evening. Yeah. I have something at 4, but I could probably not go to well, five work? Yeah. Just be aware that if you get too late, I don't know who normally meets on Tuesdays. You know, uh, planning meets? board meets on Tuesday, but not that Tuesday. Okay. I'm just thinking about a space. Oh, yeah. yeah. Space. Okay. Well, if we need to, we can go. We can go. We can go. Or we can go right. to the library. Yes. Yeah, yeah, library, 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 historical yeah. society, any public yeah. building. There are other yeah. places. Yeah. 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 So tentatively, right now, the space at the clock too long. That's true. Really. That's yeah, as long as we have recorded. If it's an open meeting, we just have to be able to record it. Two station. We always met at the Historical Society. I don't know if there is an actual requirement to record a committee of this type. I don't believe no, so. Not in our bylaws. No, it would be okay. ideal, but right. I don't know. Not required. So okay. what I'll do is I'm, I will prepare a, I will post prepare a meeting notice for uh, Tuesday, August 8th at 5 p.m. And I'll put it. I'll well, ask you. need the agenda before. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, I know that. Yeah. But I'll um because I can make something up and I'll talk to the guy about it. Yeah. Um, and it will and it will really be it's going to be to to approve the minutes and to review the um whatever that report is called. <laughs> <We're> gonna, <laughs> I actually got to go back to my notes. What are we going to get? What's it called? Yeah. Profile. The profile. Yeah. profile. And to, re to review the profile uh, recommendation report from. Municipal solutions, and and that, that, that's all I got to put because that and then you know the notice that and then anything else can come up that we can talk about. So, yeah, so, okay. Does that work for you guys? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I do have a finance committee meeting at six thirty that night okay. here. So as long as we're done by then, it's fine. Okay. So it's five thirty to six thirty. Really, you don't want to pull that. Ask Mary or Jeff to yeah. send you a template for that agenda notice meeting. Yeah. Because over the ICOM, I should have a template. The top half yeah. is the spe specifics, yeah. and the bottom half is my agenda, so it's just one document. Okay. I always take the same one and just well, I do, I tend to change do it. Well, I tend to do that too, because I used to do this on the town one? Okay. I think so. So, Deb, can you send me one? Thank you very much.
And I just want to reiterate that uh, for Robert's rules, the committee were not a board, and I like to go by small committee yeah. Yeah, uh, rules and regulations. So you really don't have to go through the chair as long as it's respectful. You know, we can have discussions. Thank you, because I you realized it after today how much I don't follow that. Yeah, well, there's a section about yeah. small, small yes. boards, small committees, and we are a small committee with seven people. Anything? That's one way to get around. Yes. There we go. Well, the 21st edition is all is all small board now. For Robert's yeah. rules, 21st edition is all small board. So we all our boards and, and committees in this town. Under yeah. Yeah, and it's up to the individual or the yeah. committee. Well, some people like to. They want to. Yeah, they select them. Like Actually, yeah, yeah, our, our, select our, charter, our, our charter, and bylaws don't say that. Yeah, really. Audrey, Audrey, our charter and bylaws do not say that we have. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I know. So, 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 so technically, we fall under. Do I have a second? Yep. Unless otherwise specified. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Nice to meet you all. By the way. Yes. Yes. Nice to meet you. Yeah, really well. Thanks for your work, Deb. Yeah. I thought I was, you know, Tom and Tom. Yeah. And it's funny because 